Hello and welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Aisha Subarkash. Over the next two decades, Turkey will be facing stark challenges. How to keep providing electricity for a growing population while also meeting a net zero carbon target by 2050. Already importing the vast majority of its energy needs, the country has looked for more sources closer to home. One sector Turkey has been pushing is the wind power. And the country's energy ministry feels they have found a potentially promising site. The Turkish Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources is offering bids to companies to study the feasibility of generating wind power in the Sea of Marmara, south of Istanbul. Energy officials say they have identified three development zones that could be the country's first offshore wind farm. Under its national energy plan, Turkey aims to have 5 gigawatts of offshore wind power installed by 2035. According to the World Bank, country's offshore wind power potential could be as high as 75 gigawatts, which, if realized, would make it one of the top 10 wind producers globally. And to further discuss Turkey's offshore wind energy potential, joining me now from Washington, D.C., is Mark Leiburn. He is the offshore wind program lead at the World Bank. And from Izmir, Turkey, Sanjay Rozan. He is the head of Innovation and Entrepreneurship Policies Unit at Izmir Development Agency. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. Mark, let me begin with you. Turkey has identified three offshore wind development zones and is now preparing to develop offshore wind projects in the Sea of Marmara. How significant is this? It's significant. Uh, the World Bank has been working with Turkey on offshore wind for the last four or five years. And we've done some work recently to look at the potential around Turkey and identified a lot more than three sites. There's at least 60 gigawatts of, of potential for offshore wind in the country. And to give some context, that's around about half of the total generation capacity in the country today. Mm. So even if a small amount of that got delivered, it would be pretty substantial for, for the country. And the projects in the Sea of Marmara are, are being supported at the moment under a grant um, to look at the, the technical feasibility and doing more preparation to, to understand the risks and, and the challenges involved with those projects. So could you talk to a little about this? How will this project evolve once you run some tests? So there'll be a period of, of gathering some of this data and information and the government will work on, on bringing together the regulations and the competition that will be required to select investors and developers to come and build that project. Mm. Uh, it will take some time because it takes, takes a while to understand the sea, the wind, the environmental conditions. But bringing all that information together uh, is important to, to understand the design and also to reduce the cost and the risk. Mm. Could you give us some timetable, like how many years? So typically it will take maybe three years to do all that preparation work. There will then be a competition to select a developer to come in and actually start progressing with that project. There will be a period of procurement, which might take another two or three years and then a construction period of, of two or three years as well. This is typical with our international uh, experience across the 19 countries that have de delivered offshore wind to date. So, Sanjay, what kind of a potential does Turkey have in terms of wind power? I mean, if you compare Turkey wind, Turkey's wind energy potential to that of Europe, what would you like to say? Yeah, actually, as you said, uh, we have huge potential in wind energy sector, uh, but uh, when we compared in Europe, we uh, started a little bit late. Mm. Uh, around 20 years ago, we started to uh, establish and build uh, our first uh, power plants. But for now, we almost uh, reached uh, and we are now the competitors of the, uh, this market. And now uh, Izmir's potential and Turkey's potential is really high around... Uh, when we uh, calculate uh, onshore potential, it's about uh, 70 gigawatts. Mm -hmm. And when we uh, come to the offshore potential, it accumulates around 50 or something like this. Uh, so it's in total, uh, we, we are reaching around 130 uh, gigawatts uh, potential. But when we come to offshore wind energy, uh, generally 80% of the uh, potential uh, is suitable for the floating uh, turbine investments. That's the main uh, challenge and we have to overcome this situation. Mm. So, but Sanjay, what are your main priorities as development agencies, both of Izmir and let's say Marmara? I mean, how important is green energy for your region? 
Yeah, actually, the awareness of this issue is really high in Izmir, uh, and the uh, industry is uh, almost mature in that area. Uh, for example, we have lots of equipment manufacturers. Now, in Izmir only, uh, we have uh, employing around uh, 10,000 people in only wind energy sector, in equipment manufacturing. And also, we are exporting around $1 billion uh, equipment uh, annually. So this is a huge potential. Uh, when we are talking about uh, wind energy or clean energy or clean technology, we are not only uh, thinking about uh, energy investment. We are also thinking about uh, equipment production and exporting sure. it and uh, having this technology. So, Mark, Turkey's first offshore wind auction was tendered in 2019, but was met with little interest and, of course, was postponed. So what has changed in the, life, uh, in the last uh, five years? Well, the global industry is really growing and maturing rapidly. It's been over the last 10 years we've seen the technology increase in scale, come down in cost to a level that's very competitive with other forms of generation. Um, so in the last five years, we've seen that, that progression continue. We've seen the scale of turbines increase. We've seen the advent of floating offshore wind turbines, which is going to play potentially a role for, for Turkey's future. Um, some of the challenges maybe around that first tender were uh, understanding the sites and the conditions. Mm. So uh, what is there with the wind conditions? As I said, what, what is what the, the seabed like? What are the environmental challenges? So the, the work that is being undertaken now is to try to understand that in, in more detail, help reduce that risk and, uh, and help to encourage investors to come in and, and participate in a future tender. So uh, give us a perspective here. How have rising inflation rates, cost of living and your political risks? driven countries to diversify their energy sources? Many countries are all in this, facing this very similar situation. It's uh, you know, a lot of global challenges at the moment. The, the introduction of or the use of, of renewable energy using your, your country's own uh, renewable energy resources gets away from some of these potential macroeconomic shocks and some of the, uh, the challenges, with, particularly if you're, you're importing fossil fuels and relying on, on uh, global electricity or, or energy markets. So you're potentially being in charge of your own uh, destiny and your own uh, fuel source locally. So Sanjay, how is Turkey adapting itself to green energy and how does it um, plan to integrate with the global supply chain? Could you talk to us about your plans, if you will? Actually, uh, first of all, uh, as uh, we all know, uh, the Ministry of Energy and National Resources have announced a roadmap and energy plan uh, until uh, 2035, uh, but there are uh, general aims and targets defined. Uh, but when we come to the regional level, as Izmir Development Agency, we prepared a, a Turkey's first regional offshore wind energy roadmap. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are trying to plan uh, how to integrate and how to, uh, as you mentioned, integrate the supply chain and also uh, the first pilot projects, developing uh, the project and also collecting data. For example, according to our uh, roadmap, we started uh, a project and uh, with collaboration of Izmir Institute of uh, Technology, we are going to establish an offshore mast. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, at that point, we want to uh, collect data from the site. Uh, generally, we are focusing on in Alia and Chandala region because the most potential area in Izmir, uh, the northern side of Izmir. Uh, so we are focusing on this area, and also uh, we have uh, actually we have a Chandala port project. It's not uh, active now, but uh, we are trying to uh, make it alive, and we are developing a feasibility study on this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, how we can uh, use this Chandala port for offshore and how we can integrate uh, an industrial area uh, specialized in wind energy equipment manufacturing just behind the port. Sure. So this is, this is the crucial, I think. So, Mark, you have talked about uh, Turkey's potential, but what are the challenges before Turkey to thrive as a major wind power in its region? Uh, there are many challenges from technical to financial to environmental and social, and, and a lot of that work is, is, is on underway in terms of characterizing these sites. Um, 
we've seen the success that this this sector can bring, both from you know diversity diversification of of electricity supply, the the introduction of of new jobs in coastal communities and economic benefits that are brought. So you know, once some of those challenges are overcome, then there really are some some incredible benefits that could be brought to the country. So, um, mm-hmm. I mean, some of the, the challenges, you know, it is a very large scale form of generation. It is big infrastructure um, and requires a, a lot of communi- communication and coordination across government, local stakeholders and, and everyone that's going to be involved in, in, the, in the development and operation of these projects. So it seems there are lots of difficulties uh, that need to be overcome. But what's at stake for the World Bank as well as the European Union to support the renewable energy sector in Turkey? We, we are here to help the government of Turkey to, to meet its energy objectives and targets. And we now have a, a target of, of five gigawatts of offshore wind in the energy plan, and that would be delivered by 2035. Uh, so we're here to provide that support, um, both on technical advice and assistance. Part of the program that I'm in is, is SMAP, which is very much providing that technical assistance and advice. And I, and I lead this offshore wind program that is supporting many other countries around the world, mm-hmm. uh, but also then bringing in the financing to, to deliver the, the, these projects. Um, Sanjay, there are about, if I'm not mistaken, 300 onshore wind farms across Turkey. So how are offshore wind farms different to those on onshore? Actually, it's, uh, when we compare it, it's more complicated when we uh, put on the table uh, these two uh, technology. Actually, uh, in logistically and also uh, the human resource needed and also the equipments and the soft skills also, it's totally different. And the equipment sizes are really huge when we go to offshore. Uh, you have to have, uh, as I mentioned, a specialized ports, roads, industrial zones, focusing and specialized in that issue. Uh, unfortunately, in Turkey for now, uh, we are uh, focusing on onshore. We are really mature on that sector, but uh, we have to uh, add some value and uh, support some issues to integrate this offshore because of the equipment sizes and the uh, complexity of the offshore. So, Mark, how important is foreign investment in making Turkey an important uh, green energy producer? So the, the developers that have got experience in offshore wind uh, to date have mostly been from uh, from Northern Europe and also in China. So it's a very much a global international industry and, and those developers will bring along with them uh, international financing. So these projects, as we mentioned, are, are very large in scale and, and complexity and, and they do require a lot of capital. And that capital has to come from you know, any source that, that is available and, and is, uh, is offering to, to support and finance offshore wind. So Sanjay, last question, is Turkey likely to achieve its targets set in the National Energy Plan? What are the challenges before Turkey to reach its full potential? Yeah, actually, uh, we need to invest uh, really high. Uh, for example, uh, to stabilize uh, the energy production, uh, we have to make some energy storage investments. And also, uh, we have to develop some international collaborations to use our uh, sea sites. And also, uh, we have to uh, support some spin-offs and startup companies. Mm-hmm. Uh, so to do to, to this, uh, we have to uh, support and uh, be active in the R&D activities. Uh, so in that uh, case, we can be an actor in that area. All right, gentlemen, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk and good luck to you both.